good morning everyone today we'll come uh, with a new video of class 12 in the previous class we have discussed about current electricity and the first part and mostly there we have learned about the previous thing what we have learned in class 10 uh, we have learned about ohm's law that we have already learned in previous classes uh, factors on which resistance depends and uh, based on it what resistances generally we use okay so today we'll start from that portion some common commercial resistance common commercial resistors so i think in class 10 only you have already learned that how resistance is very much important in an electric circuit. The resistance is an important uh, part of a circuit by which we can able to control the current. Okay, so in an electric circuit, what kind of resistors generally we have used? First one, it is known as wear resistors. And which is mainly used in laboratory to make resistance boxes and what materials are used there that is nichrome manganese constantin so this kind of alloy by using this alloy we have to make wear and that where is producing resistance now you might be asking how do you we increase the resistance definitely when we increase the length of the web the resistance will be increased okay i think you have seen in your lab on this kind of box is given here some keys are there like this okay i think most of you have already seen it so like this type of keys okay. and here this nichrome manganese or constantine this type of uh, wares are used to increase the resistance okay now these are mainly laboratory resistances we have used but apart from this in our general circuit what resistors we have used they are known as carbon resistors now the question has come sir why the carbon resistors are needed already we are having that alloys so as i have already told to increase the resistances what we are need to do now we need to increase the length which is uh, sometimes very much difficult for us because when you need a high resistance you need a long wear so apart from registers also many more other effects are there on the circuit okay so for that reason along with it it seems to be very it, it seems to be occupy a very large amount of area so to get rid of this problem what we have taken the carbon registers okay so carbon registers what is it it is made by black carbon clay and resin and most of it there is a cover of ceramic is given over it okay and that is used as carbon resistor i have taken with me some carbon resistors to show you that how it looks i think this kind of thing you have seen inside the circuit the color may be different okay so this kind of things I think you have seen in circuits okay these are basically registers and we focus here on the registers there are some colors if I have shown you some another registers you can easily identify that there are some colors are given on the registers okay you see the different type of colors are there so these are known as carbon registers so it is made by black carbon, clay, resin and ceramic. Okay. Now the question has come. The carbon resistors, it will not occupy much place. I think you have seen the size. 
and if I'm talking about the cost, whenever I have bought it, you don't believe. I have bought 10 resistors in 1 rupee, means per resistor is 10 paisa. So it is very less. Okay. And by using the same size, we can increase the resistance from some ohms to some kilo, mega ohm. Okay, this much range can be covered by a small size of carbon resistors. So that's why if you see any electrical instruments, there are carbon resistors. Now the question has come, how do we understand what should be the value of the resistance are given in the carbon resistors? Okay, one we can easily calculate by multimeter one instrument is there by which we can just put it in the two terminal of the resistors but it is not possible to find the resistor always we have to bring multimeter and check how much resistance is there inside it so for that reason we have used that color codes we have seen some colors that they are there over the resistors so these are known as color codes how the color codes are used to find the resistance that we have to see okay that we have to see first i am writing one sentence see it See, I have written one sentence and by the writing of the sentence, I have used two different colors. I have written B.B. Roy is a good batsman and very good wicket keeper. Okay. What is it? Is there any cricket class is going on here? No. These are the color codes what we generally used for carbon resistors. The first B the B in blue color, the first B stands for black. The second B stands for brown. R stands for red. O stands for orange. Y stands for yellow. G stands for green. B again. This stands for blue. Okay, I am coming this side. V. This stands for violet. Next G stands for gray. And W it stands for white. Okay. So, by this different different color different different alphabets we have just shown you different different color now you might be asking sir by this thing what we have to understand now i'll give some numbers along each color so it is very easy 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 you see nine colors and each of the color i have given one one number okay apart from this also three things are used okay and these three things are number one gold number two silver and last one there is no color okay no color this gold what it represent and silver what it represent 
5% and 10% of tolerance level. Now you might be asking sir what is the story about these numbers? I am coming step by step one by one. Black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, violet, uh, yellow, green, blue, violet, gray, white. This nine colors are there. In a register if you see out of these colors three colors are given. So we have seen the registers now. So in the registers one, two, three colors are given and after certain distance either gold or silver this color is given and by seeing the color we understand the value of resistance how whenever we have to see a resistance the first color it signifies first significant figure second color it signifies second significant figure and third color it represents power of 10 and last one it represents the tolerance I know till now it is also difficult to understand what is it I will explain one by one assume I am taking an ex example one resistance is given to you the first color is given blue assume it is blue second color it is given red third color it is given green and last one assume it is gold so by that what we understand so first color is blue so blue means six so that is our first digit six second color is red the next is two third color is green we have already seen third one is power of 10 so green means what 5 okay so we have to write 62 into 10 to the power 5 okay so this is the resistance this is the value of the resistance that means 6.2 mega ohm the value of the resistance should be 6.2 mega ohm mega means 10 to the power 6 and what is the effect of this last gold i have already told it represent the tolerance level tolerance means whenever a carbon register is made it is not fixed it just varies little bit okay gold means it can be varied 5 percent that means 62 6.2 mega ohm means it can give you the reading more than 5% of 6.2 mega ohm or less than 5% means the value will be in between 6.2 mega ohm 5% plus minus 5% okay it is known as tolerance when it is given silver its tolerance level should be gone to 10% that means tolerance level certain decrease means the value is varied little bit okay and if there is no color it is not mentioned here no color then it should be 20 percent that means the value of the resistance will be varied much so it is clear if the value if the gold line is given there that means it is a good register okay it is a good register because its value shouldn't vary much but if there is no color that means it will vary much okay so these things okay these are known as the color coding so let's see uh, one resistance here and try to understand what things or what value is used here okay so as you know i have taken one resistor let's see Here. 
if you see it okay so we have to start always whenever we have to take it in our hand okay so we will take the gold or silver whatever it should be in our right hand side okay and we will start from the left so see here if we start from our left so first one is orange okay so if you see here it is orange first one next one is again orange so this is orange this is orange and last one it is brown okay and at the end it is gold that is the resistance we have shown here so orange means how much orange you see three so it will be three next one second significant value three and last brown means 10 to the power 1 and gold means 5% so what will be its value it will be 330 plus minus 5% ohm that will be the resistance in some registers I just show you just now I have seen now suddenly I have not able to find it out um, many more resistors are there so as you uh, there is another resistor here the first two it is green you see first two is green and next one it is brown so first two green means green means here five five first two is green five five and then it is orange orange means power of 10 10 to the power one so that value should be taken as the power of 10 okay and last one it is gold so plus minus 5 percent so it is 550 plus minus 5 percent okay so this kind of way we can able to find the reading or the value of carbon resistor what is the good thing about the carbon resistor i have told earlier also that it is taking a very small place okay its cost is very low and next one the effect with temperature we all know as the temperature is increases then the resistors will vary so the effect of temperature on this carbon resistors it is little less okay so that's why we prefer carbon resistor rather than wire resistors so wire resistors are mainly used in laboratory to show you the experiments but in practically we have to use these carbon resistors okay after this class i will give you some colors and by that you have to find out what is the value of the resistance okay okay so next part we are going to start that is drift velocity okay. so what is it that we will discuss little later but before starting drift velocity one thing i make you remember that in the previous part we have learned about the carbon resistors you might be asking that some of the carbon resistors you will get there is only two colors then you might be thinking sir then how we can able to measure the value so very simple thing is there two colors means two significant figures there will be no power of 10 okay so if it is given two colors assume red orange okay so red means it is 2 and orange means it is 3 so it is 23 ohm because there is no another color we will not bother about that so forget about it we have to come to the next part that is drift velocity and this thing is new for you what are we going to learn here let's see in the previous class only we have told that when I am taking a conductor then if I have given a potential difference to it then the current passes through it why the current passes through the conductor the reason is that the conductor have free electrons okay now the question has come so before giving the potential difference whether the free electrons are static because whenever we touch the conductor that time 
it will not give any sort of shock to us that means there is no electricity is passing through it that means what whether the free electrons are static no the free electrons are not static they are moving but the free electrons are moving very randomly okay and in a very haphazard direction that's why no net current we can get so to get a proper current we need that free electron should move one particular direction so i'm coming here motion of electron before giving any electric field so when you have not given any external electric field that time the free electrons you have to mention free electrons they are moving but they are moving in a random way okay random way so if i'm talking about this is a conductor okay. so the free electrons some free electrons are moving here some moving here it's too much haphazard any direction they can able to move so if i want to find the average velocity of electron without electric field whenever we have not given any sort of electric field then what will be the average velocity so average velocity means the number of velocities divided by number of electrons so assume the first electron is moving with a velocity u1 second electron is moving with a velocity u2 so everyone di velocity's direction is different okay magnitude is also different so assume up to un because n number of electrons are there if it is divided by n we will get it is zero so when we have not given any sort of electric field that time the average velocity of the electron inside a conductor it seems to be zero and that's why we will not get any sort of shock when we touch the conductor okay because there is no particular velocity the net velocity or the average velocity is zero when a electric field of e is given when electric field e is given across a conductor then the force on each electron f will be what will be the force we know force equals to we have already learned it earlier force equals to charge into electric field because force per unit charge that is known as electric field so force equals to charge into electric field so what is the charge of electron that is minus e what is the electric field okay what is the significance of this negative sign this negative sign implies that in which direction you have given the electric field the electron moves exactly in opposite direction okay so if you have given a electric field here it is positive and here it is negative so you have given a electric field in this direction but the electron realize a force in the opposite direction okay that we have learned earlier also that the direction of current is exactly opposite to the direction of electron because in which direction electric field is applied we have taken the current is passing through that direction but the electron feel the force in opposite direction okay now as we have got the force from here 
we can able to find the acceleration felt by the electron acceleration felt by one electron how much acceleration we will feel we know force equals to mass into acceleration and acceleration equals to force by mass so if mass of one electron is equals to m e then acceleration a will be a by m e and what is the value of a minus e into capital e by m e so this is the acceleration assumed or realized by the electron okay now assume when the electron starts moving so it is not like that if they are moving in one line one by one just like whenever you have gone for assembly one by one line the electrons are moving not like that as i have already told they are moving haphazardly so when they moves haphazardly they will have some collisions okay definitely they will feel some collisions and when the electric field is given also the collision will not stop there is some collisions okay so when the collisions are occurred after one collision the electron covers some distance and it will come across another collision just assume here one electron is there here is another electron it is collided with it and now it moves like this way and when it move it collide with another electron okay then it come this way it move with another electron it move this way so when the electrons are moving by this so you see after one collision it will cover a distance and come to another collision okay and before two collisions it is covered some distance that distance is known as free path because that time it is free no collision is occur so we can write before two successive collisions electron covers a distance which is known as free path now this free path is always not same here you see the free path is small assume it is l1 but here it is little more l2 here it is little less l3 here it is little more l4 okay so in different different time the length of the free path is different so we can write the average of free path is known as mean free path okay which is denoted by lambda bar okay so lambda bar equals to l1 plus l2 plus l3 plus dot 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 ln by n okay what is n here n equals to number of collisions okay and what is l1 l2 l3 these are the free paths in different different time okay and we have find the average that is known as lambda bar and along with this mean free path one interesting thing is come across with it what is it that in every free path it will consume some time after one collision to another collision it will take some time to cover the distance okay so for that case we have defined one more quantity which is known as relaxation time relaxation time means see here the work of the electrons we are taking that is collision and before two collisions it is covering some distance 
and then it will lose some time and that time is known as relaxation time so what is relaxation time that before two collisions between electrons the time taken is known as relaxation time okay and the average of different total relaxation times is known as average relaxation time what is average relaxation time so as you to cover l1 distance it will take a time t1 to cover l2 distance it will cover a time t2 like this to cover ln distance it is cover a time t1 tn and total number of collision it is occur n so this value is known as average relaxation time which is denoted by tau okay which is denoted by tau now what we have seen that before electric field the electron is moving haphazard direction but when the electric field is given then they just try to move in one particular direction okay and they will get a particular velocity in a particular direction okay and that is known as drift velocity the heading we have given now we want to show what is drift velocity now you might be thinking sir then what is the need of learning this average relaxation time and etc etc there is a work we are coming here so now we have to define drift velocity what is drift velocity that due to the application of electric field through a conductor the average velocity achieved by electrons is known as drift velocity which is denoted by vd so what we have seen that when no electric field is there the average velocity is zero but when you have given electric field it will get average velocity okay now you might be thinking sir what is the value of this average velocity vd let's find it we know that v equals to u plus a t v equals to u plus a t what is v final velocity u initial velocity a acceleration t time okay now when we are talking about u for the electron okay so for electrons u equals to 0 because before electric field average velocity equals to 0 when no electric field is given average velocity is 0 a the value of a we have find out it is minus into e capital e by mass of electron okay what is the time time means after collision how much time it will take to meet another collision so time means here definitely the relaxation time because the collision time we will not take we will take the time it will cover a distance and that average time we have just find out it is the relaxation time tau okay so t is tau and final velocity v that should definitely the average velocity that is known as drift velocity if we put the value 
VD is equals to 0 minus capital E by ME into T and uh, into tau, I'm sorry, into tau and VD is coming minus E capital E tau by M. Why this minus sign has come? Definitely the motion of the, the velocity of the electron is opposite to the velocity or uh, uh, opposite to the given electric field. The velocity of electron is opposite to the electric field we have given. So if it is told the velocity of positive charges then this VD will be E capital E tau by ME. So this minus sign we will not take then because in which direction electron moves we are taking the positive charges are moving exactly in the direction of the electric field okay but the electrons are moving opposite to it so for electronic minus sign has come for the case of positive charges this minus sign will be taken out and it will be plus sign okay so we have learned about the drift velocity now we are going to learn the relation between drift velocity and current how we can able to find the relation between drift velocity and current it is also very easy see i am assuming a conductor okay i am assuming a conductor of length l okay the conductor should have a definite length and a cross section each and every conductor should have a cross section A. So length L and cross section A. So volume V will be L into A. There is no doubt about it. And let the number of electrons per unit volume is equals to small n. What is small n here? Number of electrons per unit volume. So from here, total number of electrons. What is the value of total number of electrons here? So total number of electrons will be capital N, that is small n into V. That means small n into L into A right per unit volume small n so total small n into v now the charge of total electrons so we know the charge of each electron is e so total charge if i am talking about capital q that should be n into e now you might be asking sir why we are not taking the minus we are taking the magnitude of the charge only here. Okay. So that's why I am not taking minus here. If you want to take, you can take it. Okay. So only there is a negative sign will come. So it doesn't signify anything. So here we are just taking the magnitude that is E. Okay. So N into E means N L A into E. So that is the total charge of the electrons inside the conductor. Okay, now as the drift velocity is VD, we have already done it earlier, and length is L. Okay, so we can write time taken by electrons to cover the length t equals to length by velocity we are assuming the length of the conductor is l 
and the velocity of the electrons that is the average velocity drift velocity it is vd so the time taken to cover it will be l by vd now we know current i equals to q by t see we have already got the value of q so put it here q equals to n n a e and if i am talking about t it is equals to l by vd so vd will come upward so it is n e a vd n e a vd that is the current so it is the relation between the current and drift velocity from here we can write one more thing that as i equals to n e a vd so if i divide a i by a it is equals to n e vd and i by a equals to j where j is current density and vectorically you can write n e vd now you might be asking sir in case of i there is vd so why i is not a vector quantity and why we are not using the vector sign here because here a is also there a is a vector quantity and vd it is also a vector quantity and definitely there should be a dot product between them and that's why i is a scalar quantity clear so this is the relation between drift velocity and current thing is using drift velocity find the vector form of ohm's law so in the previous class we have already derived the vector form of ohm's law but here we have to do it by using drift velocity how we can able to do it let's see we know drift velocity vd it is equals to e into capital e into tau by m okay so where e is the charge of the electron capital e is the electric field tau it is the relaxation time and me that is the mass of electron now you might be asking sir where is the minus sign i will also say well, i am taking the mod i'm taking only the magnitude of drift velocity so i am not using any minus sign again we know from the capacitor only that v equals to e into l from electrostatics we have learned and we have used this equation several time in capacitor so e is equals to v by l so in this equation we can replace it vd equals to e v tau by me into l small l okay and from here we can able to find this v what is v now that v is potential okay so v is equals to potential difference so from here capital v equals to m l vd by e into tau okay now we know i equals to just now we have find out m e a vd now if i want to find the ohm's law as per ohm's law v equals to i into r and r equals to v by i what is the value of v m e l v d by e into tau into you see the value of i here n e a v d okay so you see v d v d will be cancel out 
it has come m e into small l by e square tau n into a e square tau n into a clear see we are just doing the calculation i am not doing some extra thing so r equals to this we have got an extra value of r that things we have to remember might be from here the question has come if you are not able to remember then you have to derive from here my suggestion you have to follow this equation only and from here you can easily find out the r if you know the basic we know one more thing that is also so you might be asking sir how many we knows are there we know many a things okay but we forget r equals to rho l by a r equals to rho l by a so if i compare with that equation in this equation it is given m e by e square n into tau l by a so if i compare the two equation comparing what we can do that rho equals to m e by n e square tau that is the value of rho that is resistivity we have find out okay that is the value of rho now as we have got rho we can able to find the conductivity so rho is resistivity so conductivity sigma equals to 1 by rho so 1 by rho means n e square tau by m e now you might be thinking sir everything is there but what is the vector form of ohm's law you are not talking about the vector form of ohm's law and you are writing so many things here okay so to find the vector form of ohm's law we have to write the value of j j is what current density so that is also we can write that we know j equals to m e v d okay so why there is no a because i equals to m e v d a is coming here so that's why it is n e v d and if i put the value of v d okay so n e into capital e by tau by m e that is the value of vd okay so it will come n e square tau by m e into capital e that is the value of j now you see in the previous uh, derivation only we have find out that sigma equals to n e square tau by m e n e square tau by m e so we can write that j equals to sigma into e by giving the vector sign in both side that is the vector form of ohms law it is not telling little difficult but here many a things you have to remember step by step if you go you will get everything so step by step you have to find v then i then r then rho then sigma stop it then come to j derive the j in this way and here you see the value of this we will get that is actually sigma so j equals to sigma into e that is the vector form of ohms law okay so last thing of today we will discuss that is mobility but before discussing about mobility one thing i just want to tell you that what derivation we have done you have to do it in your copy by your own by seeing the video maybe it is possible you cannot able to link one after another then pause the video rewind it see what we have done in the previous and then you understand and then go don't just copy it directly then you can't able to understand what thing is going on coming to mobility mobility means it will a physical it is a physical quantity which represents how fast an electron or a positive charge or whatever it may be moves how fast it can able to move so how can we able to measure it 
So mobility is a physical quantity which can be measured by taking the drift velocity of a charge per unit electric field is known as mobility. Drift velocity per unit charge. Okay. How we can represent it? See, we can represent mobility by mu. Drift velocity means Vd by E. Drift velocity per unit charge that is known as mobility. This physical quantity signifies that how fast a charge moves. Now you might be thinking, sir, why you have written charge, why it is not electron, why it is not hole or something like that. Because when we are discussing about mobility, we are discussing the mobility of any charge particle. I'm coming one by one. So first we have to see the unit. If I'm talking about the SI unit here, so VD that is meter per second and electric field that also you have learned that is Newton per coulomb. And if we write together, it is coulomb meter per newton second. Okay, so that is the unit of this physical quantity. Now talking about the derivation. Whenever we are talking about the mobility, let's find out the mobility of electron. So for mobility of electron mu, it should be Vd by E. What will be the value of Vd for electron? It is small e, capital E, tau by Me. And here also I am taking the mod only. So we are not taking any negative sign with E. Okay. So the negative sign signifies the direction of drift velocity of electron is opposite to the electric field. Else thing is not given. So it is E into E tau by Me into E. So E will be cancelled out. It is E tau by M. That is the mobility of electron. Now you might be thinking, apart from electron, what thing are there? So mobility of electron we can denote it by mu E. So apart from electron, one thing we have done, that is mobility of holes. What is hole? Whenever we have to learn semiconductor or semiconductor device, then one concept has come that is called hole. Hole is nothing but the vacancy of electrons. Assume in this place one electron is there. But in somehow the electron is going some another place. So here one vacancy is created. That vacancy is known as hole and as the electron moves, so the vacancy should be treated as positive. The charge of this vacancy should be treated as positive. So the hole when we are talking about the hole is taken as a positive charge. So whenever we will discuss semiconductor device, then it will be clear for you. So whole mobility of hole it is denoted by mu h okay and the charge of the hole that is also same the charge of electron and its value will be e tau by m h okay as per taking this equation i am written directly e tau by m h where m h is mass of hole okay because mass of hole is not exactly same with the mass of electron okay that's why it is different in generally it is told that the mass of hole it is greater than the mass of electron and that's why the mobility of electron is more than the mobility of hole so just remember this thing whenever we will go for semiconductor device then this thing will work but before that in this chapter, you have to learn only the mobility. What is it? 
and the derivation for the case of electron. I have just only given for holes. It is not needed here. It is needed for semiconductor device. Okay. So this is up to today's work. See it properly. Read it. If any doubt, ask me. Thank you.